scientific, in quotations, paper blasted, claims asteroid destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. So this was interesting. Critics I'm blasted a study published in the online journal Scientific Report on sa um, September 20th. Um, the abstract of the article opened with a bold claim saying that they, quote, present evidence that in 1650 BCE, a cosmic airburst destroyed tal e haman a Middle Bronze Age city in the southern Jordan Valley, northeast of the Dead Sea, referring to the biblical city of Sodom. The gravest mistake the authors of the meteor theory for Sodom's destruction made was in using physicist Dr. Mark uh, Boslow's model of asteroid airbursts. Boslow personally gutted the journal Scientific Report for publishing such pseudoscience. His tirade has thus far not been responded to by any of the authors. Other experts who caught wind of the controversial study started dissecting the supposed facts and credible, and credible science the authors carried out. Archaeologist Matthew Bullanger tweeted a step-by-step -step explanation of why the study's carbon dating is incorrect. <laughs> Wait, where was this published? How is this even a scientific report? If if these people can the, tell that it was wrong and then it still got published, was this like peer reviewed or something? It, it, it was. So the name of the online journal, the title of the journal is Scientific Report. And is this like a reputable journal with like scientific report? Is that like somewhere that people recognize? Like if they if it was this faulty, how did it manage to put, go past the peer review? Well, the journal is being blasted right now, and I believe it's being um, uh, put under review, possibly for retraction. Um, you know, I know it's um, it's an open access scientific mega journal published by Nature Research. So Nature, if this is the one I'm thinking of, is very reputable. Um, and that's part of why this was so, there was so much contention. Okay. And this is like very far outside of my field. So I'm not actually as familiar with these specific journals. Um, what was, what was the conclusion of the study exactly? Did they mention the word God in the study? No, but what was interesting okay. was that several authors of the paper, like people did some digging and they have like some sort of consultancy relationship with um these like christian groups and oh, no. that one of the authors um he is a uh professor at this like unaccredited bible college essentially oh, no. <laughs> and he got his own phd from this unaccredited school and so people were doing investigations and they were like um it seems like they were really you know like looking for validation of this event and like trying to yeah um you make, seem biased. Make something they're trying to make something happen that's just never gonna happen <laughs> right so this is by the way going to be a great fuel for the christians who say that the scientific community is biased against god and they, they, it's not that they're looking for truth they're just looking for their version of the truth and anybody who dares speak against their truth is going to be attacked, suppressed, and like this is this is just going to the whole Christian victimization, you know, mindset about look, even when we use their methods to show that our beliefs are correct, they just cannot tolerate. They cannot tolerate anything that might confirm Christianity. They would have to. The entire scientific community will unite in coming down on, on anything that might reveal that God is real that Jesus came and like that the Bible is based on reality, anything that could merely even suggest that any of these events happened, the entire scientific, even if it's based, even if it's peer reviewed and we using their own methods, the scientific community just is just so anti God and is so anti Jesus and so anti biblical that they are so offended by this, that they cannot, they cannot just accept the word of God. This is how, this is how they religious they are about their scientific faith. That they, they they cannot accept any any they cannot tolerate tolerate anything that could 
challenge remotely challenge that this is going to be by the way you're welcome christians who are watching i just gave you your entire narrative um, <laughs> that's <laughs> kind of were... the narrative they went they went with really so really? Um, uh, there you go well, i was right <laughs> well let's see so there was kind of an exchange that was captured and there was um well one there was accusations that some of the images that they even used in the publication were doctored but they like reject these app uh, accusations and um there was this uh, person who tweeted, uh, this does not necessarily mean something, but it is remarkable that this archeological research was overseen by an unaccredited evangelical Christian institution that pursues a divine authority in the Bible as the only written representation of reality. And then one of the co-authors says, this doesn't necessarily mean something. WTF does that mean? Then why you post, you bigot? You are a prejudiced, cheap shot artist, anti-science punk, and need to quit tweeting and publishing your attack in and publish your attacks in peer-reviewed contexts. What other religions do you defame? Wow. Okay, I have, I seriously I want to understand this. What what is the claim here by the study? Okay, the claim is that somewhere, somewhere, like somewhere in this area that we think is was Sodom and Gomorrah. Like, do they even mention Sodom and Gomorrah, or they're just saying there was an asteroid here? Like, is what is the claim? Like, what is what it is? So there, this is like so far outside of my field and understanding. Like, I have the right. abstract in front of me; I can read it, but a lot of it is technical and means like no, no, you don't need to read the abstract. I'm just saying the ab does the abstract or the conclusion mention God at all? Does no, they mention God. No. Do they mention Sodom and Gomorrah or are they mentioning those areas only? Do they mention, do they use the word Sodom or Gomorrah? No, but they do reference Genesis. Oh, they reference Genesis? Okay. Yeah, okay, um, so at the end of the abstract, it says Tal e Haman may be the second oldest city slash town destroyed by a cosmic airburst slash impact after Abu Herrera, Syria. And possibly Abu the Herrera. entire, the earliest site with an oral tradition that was written down. Genesis. Oh, well, okay. Okay, because, guys, I'm pretty sure some cities were at some point destroyed by asteroids. Like, <laughs> in in that area. Like, I mean, that happens. Not in that, like, you know. So, that, and maybe it's true. Like, I just hope, like, if people don't think like oh this confirms genesis right it's possible that even that stories from genesis were inspired by things that happened okay so if if all it comes out that it, any of this is true like this does not mean genesis is true this does not mean god is real this means christianity is real like noah's flood story which was inspired by like gilgamesh or other stories before you know those stories might have been inspired by actual floods i mean the fact that flood stories were more common in areas where floods were a thing is not an accident right so you can't be like oh look there was a flood here um and this means that the bible was referring to something real that happened or like yeah i'm pretty sure the bible stories were inspired by some real events that probably like happened this does not confirm the bible okay so if anybody is trying to use these events these as an excuse to like oh christianity confirmed like no this is the the most you can get at is that fiction is inspired by reality right oh another sneeze is coming come on got it you got it no i ruined it i ruined the sneeze ah oh. I ruined Susanna's sneeze. I'm so <laughs> mad at you right now. <laughs> uh. Oh, it's such a horrible it, feeling. I still need to sneeze, but I can't. Oh, it's <laughs> You're such a bully. <laughs> Can we read some of these tweets before we go to the next one? Um, yeah, if you click on that, you'll see kind of a thread by that guy. Um, just let's just read the first so one. um this is uh, a physicist who in the paper they like use some of his um his his theories 
to actually make sense of like to to make their claim um and it just a note in this tweet he mistakenly identifies uh, nature as the um journal that published this it wasn't nature which is like one of the most reputable in the world it was um scientific report oh. so just to be clear the prestigious and international journal nature which i just clarified has expanded its scope beyond science and is now publishing papers in the field of biblical archaeology a paper published today asked the question did god smite the sinners of sodom with a hashtag asteroid <laughs> okay so he, i have two problems with this other than the first mistake that you already addressed well, biblical archaeology no, yeah, but that's not my main problem with it. My problem is like biblical archaeology is actually science. Like biblical archaeology is done a lot by non-Christians. And they're trying to find the sources of like biblical stories using archaeology. Biblical archaeology is not like a Christian or dogmatically religious thing. That is actually well, science. That's not and really biblical... the scope of nature, the journal nature. Okay, okay. That's why but he's saying I know I know, but it seems like to, it's, it comes across to me as if, like, you're saying, like, oh, you're being unscientific now, even because you're doing biblical archaeology. Do you know what I mean? Like, bi like, for example, a lot of biblical scholars are not Christians, and they don't let their beliefs influence their findings, right? Like, no, I mean, biblical scholars is different from biblical archaeology, but I'm just saying, like, just because something has the word biblical in it, it doesn't mean it's bullshit, okay? These are, like, serious, there's a, some, you know. Um, but, yeah, I know, like, maybe nature, maybe that's not the uh, scope of that, you know, that publication, but to me, it comes across as, like, a diss, as, a, like, oh, you're doing biblical archaeology now? Like, you're less scientific. Um, well, it is a diss when you're using archaeology to not be objective and instead look for conclusions that would support what you're yeah, looking for. I think that's what, what this person's not, getting at. Yeah, I know. It, it, to me, it is coming across as a as added like a diss as biblical archaeology. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. Okay. Um, also, the second person, a paper published today, asked the question: Did God smite the sinners of Sodom? With was that the paper court making put, asking that question, or was no, that the he's, reporting? No, he's doing like a little reporter shtick, like ask, okay, okay. begs the question: Did God smite the sinners of Sodom with an asteroid? Like that's how I right, read right. it. <laughs> yes, yes, because I mean the paper could be less guilty than where some people are assuming if the paper itself wasn't suggesting that this proves that God smites uh, Sodom, uh, Sodom. You know what I mean? But. Anyway, I just want to know just when taken in its totality, people are like, wait a second, yeah. like this city, you're making this claim about an asteroid in comparison. Like we now, like we know that the city is like referring to Sodom or what was like Gamora, you know, like I see, Oh, I see what you're doing there. Uh. Yes. 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 Do, you, do we want to read this tweet? Um, no, it's kind of just part of a longer thread. And okay, it's because people are people are technical like technical language people, that I don't understand. But they there were okay, people so, going in on this. So these are these seem seem to be like experts, or you could go and check their credentials. But you could pause the screen here if you want. Yeah, that, later that wait, this last one was good. Wait, go down. Okay. So Dr. Megan A. Perry is saying normally this would not be a problem. Um, talking about like all this other stuff she covered in her thread. But in the case of this excavation, where the director has a clear objective to prove elements of the Bible actually occurred, otherwise he will lose his $1 million endowment. This is a huge cause of concern. Okay, I don't know anything about this million dollar endowment, so I don't know where she's making that claim from. But there is a clear ideological conflict of interest here. Interesting, interesting. Um, I'm actually encouraged to see when something like this comes out and people are like, shows how much like rigorous like you know in the scientific community people are like okay let's see your biases let's see your funding let's see your motivations you know like this is like there's even when sometimes something misses that passes that filter there is a pushback against it you know what i mean like to be like how did we let this happen and there's some like post-mortem analysis so it's good it's good hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know 
like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.